Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the weekly review of Sean Rock. I am Sean the Keenan Torres, and of course, I am joined along with... And it's your boy, Sirach the Mike. How are we doing this afternoon? Or this morning? Pretty good, man. Pretty 11? good, man. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm, do- How, I'm, how's... Uh, I'm doing all right. I have had better days. I'm just kidding. I'm doing great. But I'm doing even better because we got two wonderful guests, Matt Hiskus and Jordan Carson. I almost said Jordan Peele. Like, Not that would have been nice, Carson. right? If you were listening, you if I was the- like, Jordan Peele is here. <laughs> You know, you messed direct- it up already. You messed it up already. It's Dr. Jordan Cross, man, work hard for he worked hard for his education, man. I mean, you know, like saying, when you remind yourself a million times, like say doctor, say doctor, say doctor, say doctor. And then once it's showtime, it's like Jordan Carson. Oh shit, Dr. Jordan Carson. How you guys doing? Hey, I'm just waiting for me to say Matt Hickey. I'm I'm, I'm it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. <laughs> How you guys doing this afternoon? <laughs> doing good. We're great. Good, good. That's good. So in case Glad you guys to have don't know, you guys on. In case you guys don't know that are tuning in. Jordan and Matt are debuting right today. They do debuting your podcast. The cold case, right. cold case, cold case, fro- oh, God, how to, cold case files, frozen tundra. Yeah. Cold case, frozen tundra. Okay. Cold okay. So give us a, a little description of what does that consist of? What is that about? Well, the podcast itself is actually something that we decided to do after I was asked by investigators in Winnebago County the sheriff's okay. office in particular, to help them with a search that they were undertaking to find a missing body um, from a murder that happened in 1983. And yeah, so they, we did they, they didn't just come to you for just no reason. I mean, there's a reason why they came to you for this, correct? Yeah, they came to me. I mean, I'm an anthropologist. And so mostly my work is focused in archaeology. So okay. I excavate a lot of times human burials for, for scientific Damn, purposes. I was hoping, I was hoping you going to say dinosaurs. No, no, no dinosaurs. <laughs> Way too recent for dinosaurs. You know, uh, <laughs> off, un, unfortunately, by, uh, you know, by a few dozen million years. Uh-huh. But it's, uh, it's, I excavate ancient human bones for scientific purposes, usually like 6,000 year old or so bones. Uh-huh. And that's helped me with that. But then because I do that as part of my kind of academic background, I also can help out with forensic cases. So when they need to excavate burials, I help. The methods of archeology span are the methods that you can use to really make sure you recover any human burial. Okay, what's uh, that's that's what got me involved with it. Like, how did you, like, what sparked your interest in that? If you might be asking. Uh, When I was in college, I just took it as a gen ed and I liked it enough. I took it some more and got a bachelor's degree and then got a master's and then got a PhD. Just went for all, (laughs) that's that's how you do it. What's like- um... Kind of snuck up on you, huh? It's like- Yeah, all of a sudden I was just out of college for long enough that they just let me start (laughs) teaching basically. You want to (laughs) teach? Do you want to teach it? Sure, why not? Why not? So like, you know, we've watched plenty of uh, um, documentaries, movies, TV shows. I mean, it's all over, uh, I guess you could say uh the news and stuff like that but like is it you know is what we see on that's portrayed in movies and tv shows similar to what you actually do or is that just completely off i don't know i mean not really i wish that indiana jones is like what we do but it's <laughs> not i mean I don't let him fool you he's great with a whip I he's great with a whip. <laughs> yeah with a whip uh you don't never not- go out like to a crime scene like dressed as indiana jones no i can't say that i have And then, yeah, I mean, in terms of working at crime scenes, I mean, it depends on the TV show. Sometimes it's kind of realistic. Sometimes it's not. Okay. You know, like holograms and stuff like that. I mean, it's a lot (laughs) more prosaic. How how did you two link up? How did this project come? We've been friends since we were in high school. And Matt Mm -hmm. and I went to college together. And he's got a real interest in anthropology, archaeology. And so he's actually come on my digs. So we've we've done this kind of stuff together quite a lot. So Matt, are you like, you know, like, like he was saying, you have interest in uh, the archaeology. Have you ever thought about pursuing like the same thing in a way or just figure out better as like just helping him out? Uh, well, you know, I'd love to do it sometime, but at this point it's so much school and it's in such a different direction than what I went to yeah. school for, which was like advertising communications. So, uh, you know, I really enjoy, I've gone to Ukraine with, with Jordan a couple oh, times. Cool. Mm-hmm dig up artifacts and bones i know nothing about the skeleton so his students will dig up a bone or i'll dig out a, up a bone and i'll just start yelling bones just looking at him yeah like, oh yeah like, that's I'm, a I'm pretty sure he's all patella right there <laughs> it's a femur i tell you he's a femur <laughs> good way to test them yeah how do you like how do you like i mean i know you say like you, you test them i'm sure you run like some type of dna extract but like do you have like the keen eye to where you can see like half a 
you know, uh, uh, a a femur or something like that and know exactly what it is? Sure. Oh, shit. You can actually, actually, anthropologists who study the skeleton, we can find really little bone fragments. I mean, small, uh like the size of a dime sometimes, and you can tell what bone it is. Oh, damn. so is that kind of going back to the, the, the to the project you're doing? Is that kind of what got you in why they came to you because you were such an expert in this field? Um, yeah, I guess that's probably it. And, uh, you know, I think that it's I've worked with them on a lot of cases before. And so okay. they've had cases where we've had to excavate bones or sometimes well, the, the biggest thing I do, honestly, is where people find bones. Most people don't know if it's animal or human. And so I just answer that question for law enforcement just routinely. They I mean, yesterday, you all the time, though, different like, jurisdictions in Wisconsin doing that exact thing. How many like oh, dog wow. bones do you find instead? Like dog, 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 it's dog, some human, dog, dog, but it's dog. up here. It's white tailed deer. Oh, oh okay. deer. yeah, yeah. A lot of Jesus. You, it's like you got to teach them, like, listen. Do you see a uh, elbow? No. Okay. Well, then it's not a person. <laughs> Did you find it behind a buffalo wild wing? <laughs> it's a chicken wing. Is, is there flesh on it still? Like, oh uh, yeah, I, guess, I don't know. The chicken um, wings do happen, unfortunately. <laughs> so, how did you guys? You know, you guys have been friends for a very long time, but you know, what kind of motivated you guys to start start this podcast? We were just talking about it on the phone. I think I called Matt one day after work, mm-hmm. and I had this the search that we're engaging in is it's going to be time intensive. It's going to take a couple of weeks Mm -hmm. and there's technology and manpower that has to be used and all this. And I was talking to him about the case. And then I don't remember even if it was me or him that kind of was like, Oh, it'd be cool podcast. But Mm -hmm. eventually we just kind of thought, wow, that'd be, that'd be fun to do just as something to do. And so then when we started looking into the case, I mean, the case itself is really interesting because Uh there's, it's got everything you'd expect in this kind of thing. It's got affairs. It's got, well, murder. It's got, you know, uh, it's scorned lovers, friends, family, and a lot mm-hmm. of mystery thrown in. And so just the story behind it just, you know, makes for a really good podcast. And then when you throw in the science and the search and, you know, that effort, I think it really will hopefully be a compelling story for people to listen to. Okay. So like um, I was reading, so Matt, you're in Michigan, Jordan, you're in Wisconsin. You got it. So you guys obviously link up where starsky i said star i keep saying starsky like that's a, is that a pl- <laughs> like it's a place yeah i keep saying starsky so like this is in uh this is in wisconsin correct yeah it's in a little town called nina south of green bay okay so i watched um on youtube you guys uh preview well not the preview but like when you guys just driving around and throughout the neighborhood and stuff like that i mean like obviously nothing's taped off so you know what's the first thing that you i guess would be like looking for in terms of the search, I mean, we have to use technology. I mean, okay. we have to, we have got some intelligence in terms of new intelligence in terms of where to dig. Mm-hmm. And then we've got technology to use to try to figure out where the best place to dig is. And the biggest piece of technology is ground penetrating radar, which okay. can tell us if there's stuff under the ground, basically. Okay. So Jordan, you're the ar- archaeologist pretty much. That's and me. Matt, do you sometimes like feel like you have to go into like detective mode you're like okay he's an archaeologist but let me be like the crime scene investigator let me like zoom out and you know and, and figure out what happened you know like those like tv shows where like they kind of go back into the past and like okay well the killer was standing right here you see the footprints from you know 80 years ago <laughs> or something like that yeah <laughs> honestly i mean maybe in your mind you do a little bit but really you approach it like an archaeologist that's the way i think i mean you've got a target area and you uh-huh. just zoom in and you use your the same skills Okay. Um, that we would use in archaeology in an attempt to find it. Okay. And for me, I, I, I go at it, I guess, as somebody with like a media approach. And, and I think about, you know, what did, what did the public know about? What do people know about what, what is interesting in this case? And I mm-hmm. try to use that to help me figure out whether or not I don't even know what I'm saying right now. Good thing we didn't record this live. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. I know. It's, Are you it's muted, tough. Sean? No. Yeah, Sean. He he's muted. He just he just making he just making faces for you. But like you know, like I don't know. I always go into to acting mode, right? So like I got my archaeologist. He's dressed as uh, um, Indiana Jones, and then you got you know the CSI detective. I just I wish I was there with you guys to like kind of just monitor and see what what goes about because I mean finding bones and figuring out who they belong to. I mean, I feel like that's extremely, extremely difficult. I mean, 
It can be. I mean, it really can be. Uh, I mean, I think that it's a, it's needle in a haystack kind of thing. And so you just uh -huh. use whatever technology and methods you can uh -huh. to try to improve your chances. And that's all you can do. I mean, there's what? no secret. Uh, really, there's not a secret to it. Right. As much as it's, it's very meth methodical. You like you have your method, uh -huh. you divide up your, your search area and you, you apply your method in a way that is representative of the area and you just do your best. OK, now about, um, you know, the case you guys are working on, can you guys give us just like, a, uh, I guess, a summary of what happened or what we thought happened what you and, can, and, and the what, details what you can say about it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, like real rough outline for people who want to listen, hopefully, is mm -hmm. that it's essentially what happened is a man who lived in this town in wisconsin okay fairly well off leaves on a bicycle on an august night and he's never seen from again and there's never any skeletal remains human remains blood nothing that's ever mm -hmm. found with the exception of some bicycle parts and the case stays basically ice cold for 10 years mm -hmm. and eventually there's a break in the case based on witness statements and the wit witness statements lead the case to kind of move forward and actually a conviction to occur. Um, and it's but really for complicated 10 years, though, there. Like, I, I thought, like, you know, that'd be hard to, like, be legit if, you know, if you came to me 10 years later, like, hey, you know, if a witness came out 10 years later, like, hey, yeah, I, I thought I saw a guy riding a bike 10 years ago. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you that know, is yeah, it's the witnesses have some credible aspects to them, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. And some other things that are a little questionable. But it's uh, it was that circumstantial evidence that led to the conviction in the 90s. But oh, the body's shit. never been found. And so that's the really the point of of what we're doing now, Matt, the, before before we actually sorry, sorry, one more question. Before we started recording, um, you were saying that the that starts or, or whoever the guy that killed him, it like just took the guilty plea, right? Yeah, he because the state's case was so weak, just like uh -huh. you mentioned, probably. 10 years old, kind of weak witnesses, not a lot of evidence. Uh -huh. They were they were willing to accept his agreement to make an Alford plea, which is basically you say, I'm innocent, but I'm a little scared the jury's going to find me guilty. Oh. So it, it was created specifically to allow, you know, uh, the accused out of these situations. And so he takes this this plea. And because of that, he basically has to then from now on tell the cops all the time, you know, I don't have information. I know you want to find this body, mm -hmm. but I'm not the guy who did it, whether or not he did. So, oh, wow. So it's just like someone has to take the rap the fifth, for pretty much. Yeah, basically, it's like I'm I didn't do it, but I'm hearing you talk about it in court and I'm scared that you're going to find me guilty. So right before it goes to the jury, he says, never mind, never mind. I'll plead guilty to a lesser charge. Right. So he's not charged with murder. He's charged with uh, hom or reckless and vehicle it's something with a vehicle and uh okay and he serves 14 months in prison but so. that was all just like just made months. up then right for a life yeah That's, i mean yeah. it based on the state's case and the evidence they believe he did it um and if that's the case then he got away with murder for the most part 14 so, months is been, much has there been is okay well let's get this is this the first cold case you've, you've done i mean i've worked on some I mean, most cases that involve bones are already okay. pretty old, unless okay. it's a burned house. And sometimes, I mean, I've worked on cases that haven't really turned up anything in mm -hmm. the past. Um, Do most of them, like, you know, you pretty much figure out, like, who did what or or who the bones belong to pretty much? Sometimes. Not okay. always. Okay. Because, like, you know, Matt, like you were saying, like, for him to, you know, just basically take the guilty plea just to get a lesser sentence, get out in 14 months does that automatically like close the case and you know it's good or does it just like settle it for now like and then they reach out to you jordan to reopen and really figure out what happened i mean sometimes a lot of times what happens is you know you'll have a skeleton or some bones that are found mm -hmm. and they'll come to you with you know what what are these what's going on and or sometimes they may be found bones asked uh -huh. uh, somebody in the past they didn't get a match and then they'll revisit it and ask for somebody new to look at them okay or sometimes i help with searches for people who've been missing um you know some a lot of times it's it's hard to break those kind of things open right right you know what i think happened it has, go ahead go ahead go ahead i was watching the uh when you guys were doing the uh the car tour and i heard reference to elm street 
a few times. <laughs> yeah. And from my recollection, there's only one killer that I know that lives on Elm Street. <laughs> <laughs> they got the wrong guy. <laughs> and they never catch him because <laughs> he's never there. I think Freddy Cougar got him. <laughs> and that's why I can't find this guy. No, I'm kidding. But um, have, yeah, you, so- have you ever had a cold case to intersect with another cold case that you worked on? I haven't personally, no. They ne- I've never had them overlap. Usually they're not even in the same spot. Definitely not the same time. I mean, okay. to be real honest, uh, anthropology, like anthropology's involvement in law enforcement, it's not that common. I mean, for me to say, oh, is this animal bone or human bone? That stuff happens like once a week, once every two weeks. Uh-huh. But actual human bones, it's pretty rare. Yeah. Which hmm. is, I think, part of why this is a pretty big story. And along with our release today, actually, they're, they're doing some media coverage on it. And Dr. Karsten, okay. I think you're, you're coming up pretty quick here on having to run out for an interview, aren't you? At oh, 11, yeah, I have to go on TV. Oh, you're an hour behind. That's like 11. Like it's almost yeah. noon you now. You're very on. late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me gotta go. Through. Okay. Well, we, we won't hold you for long. Um, I had one more question for you. So yeah. basically the episode premieres today. It does. And that episode, is it, I, cause I haven't listened to it yet because it, I mean, I have, I see it on Spotify. They just kind of posted. Sure. So is that, a gonna be like a you know uh open and shut type episode it's gonna be a continuation as you guys go i think we're gonna have at least seven i think at At least least seven seven, and it depends on how the search goes it could depending on how it goes it could be a 10 episode thing right or you you could solve it tomorrow you know i mean you could figure out tomorrow and (laughs) could next week potentially we're gonna do a little work but uh uh i think really the background of the case literally takes like five episodes just to get Jeez. through and then we've got another episode that kind of goes through the science of it all uh-huh. and so by the time we're even at episode seven that's going to be like really just getting into the real nitty-gritty of the search Jeez. so let me ask you so from there what's like the a few powerful points that you you like to make that you that you would like people to hear from your podcast from this I think the thing about this podcast that's great is it's a great story, at least an interesting one, I should say. It's sad Mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, right? But it's an interesting story. And then number two, it's just a unique situation where it's, you know, where you're going to get to see how science can help uh, solve these kind of unique problems in a way that I think is like graspable. It's not going to get overly scientific. Uh, It's going to be kind of where you can see how science is cool and useful. Uh, and my students are going to help, and I, I hope that we can figure it all out. That's that's amazing that like you know your students get involved. I'm, and and like you're saying with the school, like was there like a statue of like limitations to where like you know you can't investigate? Uh, I guess I, mean, I don't know if it's an open case still, but like is there not any... really because there's been a conviction? Okay, yeah. so it's and this, so just that I... one conviction was it was enough to. I know it doesn't solve the case, but enough to say, okay, well, we're done with this case. Yeah, I mean, not to like, not to like negate the name of our our podcast, Uh but it's not really cold case in this case as much as (laughs) missing person. (laughs) It's just cold because it's in Wisconsin. It's cold and it's cold. It is very cold. Matt, have has the uh, the guy that was convicted? Has he reached out to you guys, or have you reached out to him? He hasn't. One of the main things about this is it took place in 1983. Oh, he's uh, I believe he was in his mid 40s at the time, in his 50s at the time of his trial in the 90s. And so really most everybody involved in this case is either very old or has already passed on. Oh, and so wow. that's kind of one of the challenges in in bringing some resolution here is mm-hmm. they have families, they have community contacts who are still out there and, and who a couple have reached out to us already. But um you can't really talk to any of the main players anymore who are involved in this case because right. they're, you know, it, it's too far in the past. Hell, and the yeah, neighborhood has changed. The neighborhood years. has changed. The environment has changed. Like, did the uh, did uh, Starkey have you, children at all? He did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he had, he had four daughters. Okay. So and I'm, do these stories, because you know, stories are, do get told to the kids. Uh, mm-hmm. they pa- uh, you know, parents pass stories on the kids or, or relatives. Uh, were you or did you hear of any of these stories that these kids had or or what's the word um, were told that cut, that coincided with the co- with the case? Only in the media, really. Uh, mm-hmm. in, only what's in the media. And and the funny thing, like you know, even the technology, like you're saying, back in 1983, is I mean, there's no cell phones, there's no internet, there's no 
database well maybe there is but you know it's nothing that like would even could compare to today's tech and you know that's amazing how that's what i love about archaeology because you really even though it's you know uh how do i say this it doesn't it hasn't really ch- i wouldn't say changed much like you know bones are bones you know your bones are never really going to change right so it's the same concept it's the same practices that you can instill even in the future yeah the technology of maybe reading dna could change but you know your keen eye to be able to notice certain things and and how the body's affected by erosion and, and whatnot um or, or excuse me decomposing that stays the same so Century. that's what's kind of amazing man it's like you, you're always you'll always have a job yeah. <laughs> you always, as long as we keep dying you'll always have a job. <laughs> um so, I hate uh, to run, guys, but I have to hop on the TV yeah, news. We, that's, we can completely hey, listen, understand. We can Jordan, understand. that's perfectly fine. Hey, good uh, luck Carson, with the interview on you. TV. Thanks, um, thanks, for, thanks for having us on. I really appreciate it. No, no thank problem. You for coming, Dr. We, we would love Matt, to have you on again. Matt, do you have if, to do the possible. interview as well? I don't know. You're stuck okay. with me now. So we'll keep right, you around. You're in Matt's capable hands. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Thank you, Jordan. Right, I'll see you guys. Take care, buddy. Well, anyway, we were digging up the woolly mammoth kneecaps. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, man, man, that's a, that's a lot. That's a lot of stuff, man. Like you guys got like a full blown. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Man, you might have to start a documentary after this. Oh, we'd love to do that. We, we looked into uh, what it takes to try to reach out to documentarians, but most of them, they either want you to produce it yourselves, which uh-huh. is quite costly, or if you're talking like Netflix or something, they'll, they'll only talk to people who they've already worked with before. So right. you got to go get an agent or have like a million dollar budget or something like that yeah. and all that, all that nonsense. But man, that's like, where would so- you like for, where would you like for, for this to go? I mean, there's millions of cold cases out there. I mean, yeah, there really absolutely. Are. And I'm, I'm sure that this is probably, I'm not sure, but to me, cause I'm always interested in cold cases and, and the heinous things people do. What, um, what would you like to do next with this show? I mean, would you like for him to be involved in the cold case or even go back to another case he's worked previously uh, and make that yeah. the show? Yeah, I think, I mean, the short-term goal right now is, is our podcast doesn't have an ending right now because we're truly going to build on some evidence we cover right. in the podcast and conduct an actual search. So, I mean, right. the short-term goal is that we we find these remains and, and provide answers for the community members and family members who are still around. Mm -hmm. But I think after that, yeah, I'd love to, uh, you know, Dr. Carson's involved in a number of cases uh, in Mm -hmm. Wisconsin with law enforcement. And there's a couple we've kind of looked at uh, nothing with quite the same intrigue right now, but I would love to be able to continue to go on and, and really apply some of that technology that has really developed since most of the searches originally happened and try to provide some insight on other cases. And I'm just along for the ride to chronicle it. And, and hey, no, no, no. It, trust me. It, it takes, it takes, it, it takes two, man. Sometimes, you know, like, you know, even with, with me and Sean, it's, it's hard to, to try to do this stuff by yourself. You need, you need a partner in crime, especially, I mean, yeah. you got a Dr. Carson as your partner is like, a lot easier than most, but <laughs> right. yeah, I mean, you definitely, have you ever, you guys ever wondered, uh, considered the, uh, Tupac and Biggie mystery. <laughs> That's one of those cases we still try to figure yeah. out. You guys figure that out. You got Netflix knocking on your door trying to do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we I just retire. We figure that out. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Hammer um, and Jimmy Hoffa, you'd be good. So, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what, what about this case is so intriguing to the people of Wisconsin? I mean... Yeah, do like they care? You, had, you like you had the uh, before you had the uh, making a murder thing that happened also in Wisconsin. You had uh, there's oh, been other that was in Wisconsin. Sto- yeah. Oh, been- yeah, what the fuck is going on in Wisconsin? Yeah, what are the they doing there? <laughs> eating, eating cheese, drinking beer, and murdering people. Yeah, apparently that's the recipe <laughs> for death. That's those the three podcast: things. eat cheese, drink beer, murder eat cheese, people. drink beer, <laughs> murder. <people. laughs> <laughs> with a asterisk at the end, like oh shit. Um, no, but, but what's part of this int- intrigue so much in in this community? Uh, that- yeah, yeah. I think there's a number of factors really, but part of it is is Nina. Um, we had a chance to drive through there when we checked out. It's a, it's about a half hour drive from the university. Dr. Karsten works at another okay. half hour drive from his home in Green Bay. It's kind of okay. sitting in between, and it is kind of this quaint little town but it's upscale like it's on lake winnebago which connects to lake michigan and it's really some old historic houses on the water 
kind of this gorgeous 1950s downtown street with the little shops and everything. Ooh, that's and a perfect, get, that's a perfect murder scene right yeah. there. Yeah, exactly. And it's this little, little community school there. And then there's this murder and it just didn't happen there back then. Okay. And then you get into the case and it's, these are adults. I mean, Starkey Swenson was 67 years old mm-hmm. when he went missing. John Andrews, the man who's accused of the murder, is in his 40s. His ex-wife, who was seeing both of them, mm-hmm. is in her mid-50s. These are adult people. It's always, it's always a girl involved, always. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's like there's all these characters, and they're all hooking up with each other, and they're all <laughs> they're all lying and covering for each other. And it's, yeah. it's just a strange... I mean, there's just so much going on that you can't almost believe that it's real life. I know. Somebody must have told, like, you know, Star- Star- Starkey fucked his wife. Um, you, know, <laughs> I, you hear from me well but, no, he, i know, know he rides a bike at 10 o'clock at night every, down the street every time so you know i'm just yeah. saying well, i mean all they had was was snow and and cheese and beer so it wasn't a lot they could do besides get it on and kill each other i mean yeah, yeah right. that's true <laughs> what else is gonna happen yeah what, what are like right you just bang and die i mean i guess that's what happens anyway in life and then everything else is just kind of just in between right yeah, they just and, shorten you, it a lot you find a mate <laughs> you have children and you take care of them and then you die and that, that's pretty much it um, I want to ask, I mean, it was a stupid question, but I, w- I was going to ask both of you guys, like, what do you think is the best way to get away with murder? <laughs> Cause I think you guys investigated crime scenes. Like what, if you want to kill somebody, what should it you do? Yeah. Well, you know, we've had some conversations about that for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing you shouldn't do, you shouldn't throw the body in the water. Like that will, they, they float, right? It's going to float back oh, yeah. up. Or even if you, you know, give them the cement shoes or whatever, and they sink down to the bottom. <laughs> Like once that gets to bone, that's washing up on the shore. And like you might, Ooh. you might be able to get away with, you know, some finger bones washing up on the shore. But when a skull washes up on the shore, somebody knows that's a right. person. Right. So I mean, yeah. once the bones are found, Dr. Karsten and others like him can do a lot with determining who that person is. So the real way to get rid of it just completely is- get rid of the body. Yeah, and- you would have to eat. eat, eat well, I'm gonna say eat it. Oh, that's the Hannibal Lecter. You'd have to like. <laughs> feed it to something or or like just cr- like disintegrate it somehow burn it yeah Bone, you do can't bones use burn? a normal fire not in a normal lie. fire they uh and that's lie, that's part of the uh that's part of the uh making a murder story i think they burned a body or something but you can't really burn a body very well like parts of bones are going to remain in the ashes shit like what do you do just liquefy it or they, like yeah put they it- used to use lie isn't that right they used to use like a bat to lie and, and dissolve yeah. it that way yeah, it would pretty much eat anything, but still, they would still figure it out. Pigs will eat bones, I guess. So you can feed them to a pig if you got one of those around. Isn't that? But isn't that crazy? How like now that you think about it, like damn, how do you get rid of? But like, you would think it would be a simple, you know, like oh, just throw it in water. Oh, just uh, you know, steamroll it or some shit. No, you gotta know. actually I, think about this. I think it. I think if you're, you know, interested in like investigation discovery, that the the murder porn channel is what they call it. You know, if you're interested in that then conversations are going to come up where, you know what? Because, I mean, me as a kid, I talked with my best friend growing up. We're like, <laughs> oh, shit. How could you? How could oh, you? I, well, I was no, talking no, about that. <laughs> well, no, there's a couple of things. Me as a kid, like, yeah, how, me and my best friend when I was seven years old, we used to talk about how to get away with killing people, you know, <laughs> normal kid I stuff. Was, kid stuff. <laughs> I was 12. I was 12. Oh, but, okay. <laughs> Even but, better. Like, how, how do you rob a bank, get away with it? And But, of course, how do you get away with the murder? Since they went to college, and, of course, he, college together, and, of course, he's in anthropology. Mm-hmm. it's kind of I, I would think it'd go hand in hand and in, in that it's like hey how do you think we could really do this if we really want to do this i mean that's a scary know. thought but when your buddy's a doctor well <laughs> i mean if you want to like honestly if you want to get rid of somebody just frame them for something that they go to prison for the rest of their life for yeah that yeah. sounds fucked up but like then you don't gotta really worry about it that's you know the guards and you know the warden's job to take care of that and you're good and unless the they frame, don't good behavior though or until then, they, the frame you know well comes apart. apparently i didn't know that so i had a uh a guy i work with I, I guess he got into it with somebody like a fight wise whatever but anyway this is years ago somebody went to jail for like a couple years or prison excuse me and when he got out apparently you get a letter saying so and so is out of prison like a be careful type letter like they give yeah. you a warning if you were in like in some type of assault or a uh, felony assault and uh so and so gets out so that's crazy, but yeah, let's uh let's figure out how to get rid of these bodies uh the right way. I say send them into space, put them on one of Elon Musk's uh rocket ships, and that's probably the sure way to get rid of somebody. somebody. I think you're onto so something. Matt, there. Yeah, so I know, right? Oh shit! 
they, they see you know you've been watching more... the news and it's like i think there's a body hanging off of the the spacex rocket i can't really tell <laughs> um so i know that this is one of the stories and you say that you've done other ones not you they, i'm sure you guys have discussed it not actually done the story um could you share another not fully of course i, mean, I knew there's a whole confidentiality thing but could you share there's another story another intriguing case that you guys have worked on or not worked on but that you've been able to shadow him i guess with and see what he's done with it yeah he, he's been involved in a couple interesting ones um one of the more recent ones that he was involved in there was a, a serial killer in wisconsin Ooh. and the serial killer had taken credit for for a bunch of murders but like serial killers do they play games and, and he he hadn't taken credit for a couple other murders. And apparently, uh, I could be getting this part wrong, but I believe <laughs> that they heard from a jailhouse snitch or whatever that that this guy said, oh, I did kill that girl and I buried her over here. And so they ran out to go do the search in the site for this guy's body. Mm-hmm. And I think they interviewed him and he finally admitted, yeah, it's over there. And they go there and they dig and there's just nothing there. And wow. so we've talked about like, they didn't have ground penetrating radar. Then they were just kind of digging because oh, the guy had given them a spot. So we're like, you know, how, how, how often do you walk into the woods and know the exact spot? Like, yeah, uh, I get like, lost on a trail. So exactly. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean you got to worry about like animals and stuff who can, you know, dig stuff up. And I'm, I'm oh. sure, you know, that was an, another question I had, but I'm sure that's like one of the big like drawbacks. It's like, you know, when you're going back even a year, you know, trying to find a body, like there's always, you know, that animal aspect of, especially in Wisconsin, you got deer, you got bears, right? Are bears in Wisconsin? Sounds right. Man, they're probably around there. Bears and all types of <laughs> shit. So that's definitely um, uh, uh, one of the big uh, red flags. Um, Matt, I had a quick question. So are you, you know, I noticed the guitar in the back. Oh, behind yeah. Behind you. You musician? You play? Yeah, actually. Dr. Say with confidence. And I- say with confidence. <laughs> You know, I'm right. <laughs> Dr. Karsten and I were in a band together. So we went to high school together. We were college uh-huh. roommates and uh, we were in a band together all late, late high school and college. We played like classic rock covers, bar band type thing. Uh-huh. And then uh, our singer was truly talented. She was the actual talent. She's she uh, lives in L.A. now and works for oh. the Strokes. Oh, she she just uh-huh. Timberlake, you guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. So we, you know, we're, we're for the Strokes. She, yeah, she made it. <laughs> Wait, what is what is the strokes is that a yeah, music group yeah they're a band um she's worked for them for metallica for a few others she runs their tours though so she's not she's not performing oh. anymore but she runs tours and uh we were in a band together and now i just have a bunch of music gear and i just play by myself it's pretty sad actually no it's amazing <laughs> I, have, I have a buddy um i don't even know if you know him kurt johnson does this sound familiar he went That's to cool. uh high school with me and he, he i think he's still in grand rapids michigan and he plays i see him you know, going live and, and fiddle faddling with strings all the time. So I didn't, I, I mean, I don't know. Do musicians like know each other in the area? I don't know how that works. Like we don't know other podcasters in Tampa, yeah. but we should. So maybe, yeah. uh, maybe you can link up with, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I got a guy that plays. He has a guy that plays. Maybe you guys can play together and then we can kind of rekindle this. Play. <laughs> Start Music's a whole probably better for that. Yeah. yeah. Podcasters <laughs> oh. are just a bunch of guys in their basements with microphones. I know, right? Well, <laughs> that's why I moved to Florida because there's no basements. So, you know, oh, you ever said that, I'm like, nah, I'm in Florida. There's no basements. Uh, Matt, do you, you know, I had a quick question. So, um, you know, I, I do want to do what the Florida, but Sean, this is completely up to you. I mean, I kind of want to possibly go, go live and do like a, a, another show. I mean, are you busy? Are you got some place to be? Uh, no, I can, I can probably do it um, for my, normal day job we did put out a media release today i'm expecting some media calls on but okay probably okay okay well it will be just you know our usual you know we'll we'll keep it just trending topics and stuff like that go with that sean i mean is that something you'd be willing to do uh when you're when you're talking say like after immediately after this oh okay yeah we can do that you can do that just to have you know because when I get these moves, I just keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, yeah. So this is already, like I said, recording now I can edit the way I want, but do you want to do what the Florida in here, Sean, or do you want to do it? Uh, whenever do it, you want to do it now? No, we'll just do it live. It's fine. Do it live. Okay. So, um, let's do like quick little outro type deal. And then 
I'll pause the recording and then I'll go live and then we can kind of just act like it's a new episode just so we have you on there. Sounds good. Perfect. All right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. And, so yeah, Matt, you know, we appreciate you guys coming on. I am definitely looking forward to the episode. Actually, I'll probably listen to it later on this afternoon. I'm also looking forward to episode two. And I hope you guys don't really find out what happened till episode 10, just because, just to keep the document going, but do me a favor, give us a, let us know how people can find you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you can listen to the show on most major podcast platforms, on okay. Apple, Spotify, Amazon, all the rest. Uh, you can also check us out on our website, frozen tundra podcast.com. Mm-hmm. We've got a few extra items there, including an interactive story map where you can kind of see some of the images of the people involved and some of the key locations. And then we're on, on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for cold case, frozen tundra. And, uh, what's that, uh, um, that handle for, uh, Facebook. Yeah. I should make sure I get this part, right. Facebook, <laughs> Facebook yeah. is cold case, frozen tundra podcast. Uh, and the same on YouTube. And then on okay. Instagram, we're at frozen tundra podcast. Perfect. Perfect. Anything else you'd like to add? Mm. Just thank you guys so much for having us on. This has been awesome. And it's great. Uh, you know, I listen to you most weeks and it's good to actually see your faces and talk to you. Thank you. I know uh, I'm looking kind of rough. You know, I got, uh, I, I got this headband on. I think I'm just going to start like this whole headband movement to where I just wear it all the time. Not because I like, I like headbands. You're going to be one of those Because my hairline's okay. receding a little bit. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. It's like a Colin Kaepernick vibe. Oh, oh all right. Yes. Don't encourage him. Why you are you going to encourage him? Oh my Wait till next episode. I'm going to have jerseys in the background and everything. <laughs> Football in my head all the time. Oh, Sean, that, that's, that's all I got, buddy. All right. All right. That's all I got, too. Well, with that being said, this has been the Week of View with Sean Srock. I am Sean Nikina Torres. And, and it's is. your boys, Srock the Mike. Peace. Thank you for listening.